Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 27 of FTB Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Right now, we've gone through all of the apple, I forget what I was feeding you guys, apple juice, apple smoothies that, uh, that we could craft. In fact, right now this crafting card is pretty dangerous because this crafting card is doing a crafting recipe that is failing, which is causing it to refry, you know, every couple seconds. But uh, right now our network's small enough that it's not punishing for it. But anyways, um, if I want to keep feeding all of you Civ slaves some food to make it work faster, we're going to need a better food. So let's start things off today with that. Uh, there's a couple options. Well, I mean, there's plenty of options. Pam's here has, you know, no shortage of food options. And uh, if you're a food connoisseur, well, you're in luck. However, I'm going to go with one that is very easy to make takes and takes advantage of a... Uh, food doubling recipe. I, I think I've shown it before, right? There's this augment in thermal expansion, the trivection chamber, that uh, basically anytime you cook something, it doubles, it doubles the output. So you want to do recipes that have the most furnace tasks in them as possible. Um, for this, then I'm going to keep doing toast because for toast, you step one is to make, well, basically for each piece of wheat, you can, starting with wheat, you sag mill it. Oh boy, there's a lot of recipes here. Um, where is it? Pulverizer. Here, sag, and so in a sag mill, you get at least two flour. More if you use a grinding ball, but I probably won't bother. Well, I'll use a flint grinding ball. So you get 2.4 um, flour per piece of wheat. And then for each piece of flour, can flour not be used to make bread? It's not right, right? I swear I've used flour to make bread. Is J.E.I. just lying to me? N.E.I. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Flour. Bread. Anyway, so for each piece of flour, we get two bread. So 2.4 flour is 4.8 bread. And then cook the bread again. 4.8 flour is 9.6 toast. And then you can either eat the toast as is, or if you craft two pieces of toast together. Uh, there's like all these other recipes that involve toast, but they involve like toast plus other things. <laughs> Can't be bothered to make other things. Um, hamburger. Two pieces of toast together make a toast sandwich, which is just marginally better than eating two pieces of toast individually. So I think that's the uh, the food we will sustain our Civ slaves on. So step one is to go level up our seed to 10, 10, 10 stats. For this, we get to use the little automation that I set up here earlier. Oh, uh, I have to switch it back to uh, not like these water troughs. I was one of the witchery seeds had to be grown in water troughs. All I have to do is plant the seed, hit the lever, and off it goes. I just want to make sure there are enough. Yeah, there's enough crop sticks and plenty of energy left, so I won't bother worrying about that for now. All right, while the seed levels up, let's start working on the actual processing. So it's, I mean, that's very simple, right? The sagma and two redstone furnaces. A freshly crafted redstone furnace only has room for three augments. It comes with three by default. So we'll definitely put in all the speed augments. Uh, they're definitely, I mean, it's probably, we can probably live without the last speed augment, but we can also pull out one of the default augments to make room for the trivection chamber. Uh, I typically pull out the redstone one, unless you need that. The other two are uh, automatic output, which is nice to have, and sides reconfiguring, which is practically required, unless you want your machine configured exactly like this, which I don't. So, there we go. All augmented up. When all is said and done, we have an interface providing wheat and flint. They go into a sag mill where it all gets processed and then it just works down the line. Two furnaces and lastly a crafter to turn it into a toast sandwich. And that's all All this, uh, you know, these final outputs are on a drawer. Um, the seeds I'll eventually void above 2,000 because I really don't need that many seeds. We need some to like make flowers and that's about it. So let's see if our uh, seed leveler is done yet. This didn't take very long, so I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't done yet. Let's check the stats on these most recent seeds. And not quite. All right, it's gonna take it a few more cycles. A couple cycles later and the seeds are fully leveled. So next step, let's go build the farm that will grow these. Um, it's probably overkill for this pack, but I'm going to build my usual uh, like Drum of the Wilds based Batania Super Farm. 
I was just gathering some grass to make the drum of the wilds, and uh, I figured we haven't looked at our mega node for a while. Really big. I also bullied some of these nodes to be really small. The bully nodes do receive some damage over time, and they will eventually get killed off. Although, uh, I mean, it's been like a week and they're still not dead yet. But, uh, yeah, this note has a lot of aspects in it, huh? Definitely low on air. I think when I start a new note, I'll swap one of these side nodes out for a bigger air note. Anyways, um, back to what I was doing. I needed some grass, pasture seeds, to make the actual horns of the wild. Some small differences from what I usually do, um, I prefer to use autonomous activators with Horn of the Wilds over Drums of the Wilds because they're a bit more responsive to redstone. So it's basically, you know, there's an instant-ish response time from when you turn it off. They also just work faster. Um, Drum of the Wilds seems to have like a limit on how many crops it'll harvest per uh, like instance of being pulsed, whereas the Horn of the Wild seems to either not have that limit or have a higher limit. Of course, it doesn't matter when I only have one crop being harvested, but when you have lots of plants, it matters more. Um, besides that, I guess it's just the usual. Uh, Agricraft crops in this version don't require light, um, so I don't need to worry about lighting it up. There are some that require darkness, but as like most of these basic crops like wheat do not actually require light, so I don't have to worry about uh, lighting the place up. So, as long as I have this lever switched on, that piece of wheat will be harvested as soon as it grows. And if I need more wheat than one plant can produce, then I can just plant a second or third or fourth or, you know, ten wheat plant. But uh, this, pl this type of farm is very good because once you have the infrastructure set up to add more plants, you just literally plant it and give it somewhere for the products to go. Very easy to scale. Um, there is water hidden under each of these autonomous activators. The water is not strictly necessary because the sprinklers do irrigate the farmland. However, in my experience, I found that uh, if you have a lot of sprinklers irrigating farmland and you don't like uh, don't give it a water source, it tends to be very visually laggy as it uh, trans you know it goes from like the wet state to the dry state to the wet state quite often. Anyways, uh, with that out of the way, let's just set up the system for actually harvesting the drops. We can either do it above or below. Uh, I tend to like to do it below because it's a bit more hidden out of the way there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a um, one of those ender collector thingies underneath each of these autonomous activators. Right, They have range 4, so it'll cover the entire area here. And uh, we'll attach those to a drawer system. I built a bunch of drawers here. Floating over the void. I want to make sure that this is a uh, no one without a jetpack can come steal my wheat. The security measure. Um, the only big golden rule you have to follow with a farm like this is that no matter what, do not let the farm generate items that do not get picked up into a drawer. And every drawer must be voided because if ever you let items just build up on the ground, uh, there will be so much item built up in the five minutes before the despawn timer kicks in that you will crash your world. Like it, it is going to happen with this a single plan. So, um, we see wheat is now being automatically, as soon as it grows, it gets harvested and stored in here. Uh, for plants that can't be compacted, we have regular drawers for it too. But uh, yeah, later if we need, you know, potatoes, sugarcane, I don't know. Uh, probably need sugarcane now, actually. But any other plants we need, we can add to here. However, right now we can't access these plants on our ME system because, well, it's not plugged in. It is close enough that it's not unreasonable to run a cable there. It's probably what, like, in fact, I have, it's a little over 200 blocks. Like, that's far, but that's not unreasonably far. However, I think I'm still going to set up the uh, the wireless system to, um, to wirelessly transmit the ME channels from here to there. So for that, I'm going to need uh, the quantum ring and actually, let me make sure I can make the quantum ring. I haven't actually looked at this recipe. I better not use a quantum core. Now nah, this looks fine. Uh, in fact, these almost look like the basic recipes with the exception of the energy cell. Okay, um, so if we need a quantum ring and a quantum entangled in singularity. So let's start by building the ring and then I'll work on the singularity. The quantum ring uses a number of these energy cells. While you can auto-craft them, it does actually consume your Sir Discord's wrench if you do so. Um, I think just the way the scripts are written, that it tries to give the wrench back to you, but if it's 
an auto crafter if they're able to do so for some reason. So, uh, let me sort of craft a bunch of, like, yeah, it tries to put it into your inventory, but the, uh, the, the auto crafter doesn't have an inventory to put it into, so it gets consumed. It makes crafting with it like this a little bit painful. Uh, it's probably easier, actually, if I just... Here, let's try doing this recipe in the logistics pipes auto crafter, because in that case, the, uh, item, the wrench gets put back into this temporary inventory, right? That easier... Oh, yeah. Don't don't actually crap the wrenches, thanks. Um, but w when the wrench gets put back, right, gets put into this inventory, yeah, that makes it easier to click a whole bunch of times. Alright, anyway, 17 should be enough. Bring my wrench back as well. A quantum tunnel takes two sets of rings, so uh, eight rings and one link chamber on each side. Great, those are crafted. That was easy. Next up, we have to make the actual singularity. So the tooltip for the entangled singularity says we have to yada 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 cause an explosion. I love that the crafting involves causing an explosion. But to make that we need a matter condenser. And this is really just a glorified trash can. So uh, if I put this, let's see, uh, does it require AE power? I think it does, right? Put this somewhere on our AE network so that it has power. Apparently it doesn't even connect to the network so it does not need power. Um, that's cool. Then you need to provide it. Well, I... If you don't provide it with a storage uh, cell, it's literally just a glorified trash can. Um, but if you provide it with a storage cell, you can have it... It's still a trash can. It kills items, but it can turn them into other items for you. To make singularities, you need a 64k. Uh, and it, it, it's not a cell, I was right. You need a 64k storage component. Once you put that in there, you have three options. Destroy items, turn them into matter balls, or turn them into singularities. Matter balls are used to, I think, help paint your network to, like, uh, well, for one, make it look pretty, if you care for that stuff. But it can also help with wire management. Painted cables will not connect to other cables, except for cables of the same color and Fluix, which is, like, the generic, you know, everything color. For now, though, I want singularities. So you can either pump items or liquids in. Uh, liquids count one bucket per item, so either 256 thousand buckets of liquid or just a really fast cobble generator i personally find the cobble generator approach to be slightly faster overall remember last episode when i used up every last diamond i have yeah we're back up to uh what is that 3400 diamonds so with those diamonds i will make 200 world interaction upgrades consuming 600 of them but uh the more world interaction upgrades you have in your cobble generator the faster it generates cobble I had to make another stack of world interaction upgrades to get absolutely maximum performance. So the way it works is that each second it produces one piece of cobblestone per world interaction upgrade that you have in the transfer node. Um, and if it's more than a stack, the rest will wait until you've withdrawn some. So every second this generates uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 64. What's that? Like 300, 320 cobblestone. And that's, we should see that each update here, which is about once a second, the number goes up by exactly 320. Um, all right, so this will take it like a, a minute or two to make the 25,000. Um, in fact, I can tell you exactly how long it'll take. It, based on 320 a second, it's a little bit less than a thousand seconds. Yeah, it's like 800 seconds. You know what? Let me just break out the calculator. I'm really impressed with myself right now. I have like the biggest grin across my face because I said it was 800 seconds. Turns out it's exactly 800, um, assuming it's one a second, which it's at least close to. But uh, yeah, my mental math is on point today um, until it turns out I got something wrong. But anyways, 800 seconds or uh, about 13 minutes is how long it'll take to make one singularity. So uh, I guess there's a little bit of waiting to do. During that time, let me figure out something else to work on. Perhaps it's time for me to finally make the uh, wireless terminal so I don't have to keep using the remote order to uh, access, you know, my items. I mean, the remote order is great and all, but wireless terminal is so much better. Let me uh, put in some crafting recipes. We need a, the terminal itself, obviously, access, enough access points to cover the base, some, boost, uh, some boosters, and uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Fun fact. Fiber Logistics uses the American English spelling of fiber, whereas Industrial Craft uses the British English spelling of fiber. 
thought you'd like to know. Less fun fact, the Ender Pearl Powder that's used to make the wireless booster, right, it's called Ender Pearl Powder, it literally does not show up in JEI. Any eye? It's just not there. I had to pin it and then drag it in from the pin. I'm not quite sure why that is. Oh, I remember the thing I was forgetting too. You need a security terminal in order to link the wireless uh, thingy to your network. Link your wireless terminal to a network. Just put the security terminal on that network. Put the wireless terminal in there and it's linked. Um, you can also use a security terminal to like limit who has access to your network. But uh, that's only relevant if you're you know, playing on a server with other people, which I am not. Then to actually access the wireless, the network wireless link, you need to have wireless access points. They have a range of 16 meters or 16 blocks by default using uh, 16 RF a tick. As you put more range upgrades in, the um, the energy usage, I think it's per unit, the per unit area. I don't know. Uh, it, it goes up either with the square or the cube of the number of boosters. Um, but anyways, with like 32, you get 100. 97 meters. That probably covers the entire platform here. Uh, you can do more if you like. Probably don't need the full stack. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't know. That'll do. That'll definitely cover the entire platform. In fact, that probably that's enough that it does reach my uh, my my base over there. My mining or my farming platform. I was gonna say I'll set up a. Uh, a wireless access point over here too so i could use my wireless terminal but no we are still we are just still in range so this works for me um anyways let's see if i've managed to kill enough time for one of those singularities to be formed almost uh i'll just wait like the last couple minutes when the energy drain on your network gets high it's a good idea to put an energy cell on it somewhere too um i just We'll have a single dense energy cell inside our controller, and that should provide plenty of energy buffer to keep the ener to keep the network from uh, blinking out when it. Great, right? like the how do I word this? The default ME controller only has a sixteen thousand internal buffer, so uh, once your energy drain starts approaching that number, um, because the energy acceptor or the controllers don't actually accept energy every tick, you can see your network start to blink out. But uh, with a, a dense energy cell, that, that faces a problem immediately. There we go. One singularity is done. So let's go turn it into a quantum entangled singularity. This involves an explosion. So I'll just say where the top of that thing go. Uh, where is my nether portal? I just want to do it on top of obsidian so it's not to actually damage any blocks. So throw those down. Oopsies, don't pick them back up. Throw these down. Uh, tiny TNT from Applied Energistics is perfect for this, except when it knocks your stuff off the nether portal. Wait, no, I've been debated. All right, and then light the TNT and let the explosions happen. Boink. And the output is a pair of quantum entangled singularities. They just have matching MBT data so that they stack. Um, then let's build our quantum rings. So we'll put one on this side. I generally personally prefer to um, per prefer to transmit the P2P channels through my quantum tunnels. Although, if you only need you know a few channels on the other side, there's nothing wrong with this transmitting your actual uh, your actual channels. Build one of the rings on one side, give it one of the quantum entangled singularities, and plug it in. You can plug into any of the four, uh, like these four glowing pieces, they're all the same. Build a similar ring on the other side, put the other singularity in here, and the two are linked. However, the connection does not actually transmit power, and this side quantum ring does need power. So to power it, just uh, put an energy acceptor somewhere um, against one of these four corners, or four edges I guess, and give that power. And then it'll light up to indicate that it's working. Now, once you power it, because it does transmit channels, you can take advantage of that fact to give it long-term power. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So we'll put that there, a P2P tunnel. Apparently you can't type numbers 
Hmm? No networks. Weird. We'll have to go link that P2P tunnel, so I'm back to the base. Let's see which one's unused. This one. Link the tunnels together. And then in uh direct well, so this network connection it does not have a power connection on it. However, because this is a P2P connection, right? It's as if this point were directly connected to the other point back there. It's as if there was no quantum ring in between. You can then loop the power back from here uh, through a quartz fiber so you don't actually leak any channels to there. And now, once you get it started, you no longer need this energy source. Um, you still need the energy source on do that to turn it off you can see even without the energy source it continues to remain powered um it's still good to just have the energy source because like when you boot up the network for the first time you need the you need an energy source to kickstart this energy loop but anyways now that we have this um now that we have channels over here we can hook this up to a storage bus on that controller with that hooked up now i should be able to see all my wheat uh, not yet. Why is that? It probably it might just take it a second to update. The device on uh, online. Wheat. There we go. We see our 3,000 plus wheat that that one plant has generated in the last I don't know 20 ish minutes. Um, accessible on the ME system. So if we head back to our base, th all that wheat should start being turned into uh, toast. Let's see. Yep, it's being sag milled then cooked. And cooked again and boy does it cook fast uh only taking like a couple ticks per recipe and crafted it into toast sandwich so all that's left is to well let's grab a stack of this toast sandwich we'll start eating this ourselves now so you know for you guys that are slaving away in the sieves i mean i'm eating the same food you are i don't want to hear any complaints we can change this to a toast sandwich and get rid of the crafting card uh, can I make that 64? There you go. Just to make things look a little bit cleaner. And then uh, that'll be distributed to all these autonomous activators. And I think Toast Sandwich provides a higher speed multiplier than, uh, yeah, it provides a 6.0 speed multiplier. So it provides a better speed multiplier versus um, the Apple whatever I was feeding you guys before. Because of this extra speed, I actually strongly suspect that uh, our hammers are too slow now. Um, for now, I'm just going to add, like, another 10 to each tower. Steel was previously the thing keeping us from making more hammers, but with 500 blocks of steel, I think you'd have no trouble requesting... I don't know, give me 30. Yeah. Only 180 ingots. <laughs> it's somewhat important that my hammers produce an excess of resources, because this also serves as like my cobble or yeah my uh cobble works so it's like i need to make sure i have gravel available for other you know crafty things that require gravel like um i don't know conduit binder uh and like a lot of things use sand all over the place like uh soul sand so if ever you know my gravel and sand dry up then a bunch of other automation systems cease functioning so looking at these numbers, I'm just looking at the top number to see if it goes up or down over time. It seems to be trending up, which means we're now producing uh, slightly faster than we're consuming, which is a state I want to be in. Next, I want to make a small enhancement to the way I'm distributing diamond hammers to all these hammers. So now that I have plenty of diamonds again, I, I turn the system back on. However, right now I'm just doing regular diamond hammers. Why don't we enchant them for extra effect? Using a MFR auto enchanter, we just select the level of the enchantment we want. So I want level 30 enchants, provide it with essence. It does take a fair bit of essence to do level 30 enchants. I think something like uh, 20 to 30 buckets of it. Um, it's basically the same amount of essence as it would take if you were to like convert it to experience. At least I think it is. Um, and it takes a fair bit of time, 25, 90, I assume that's ticks. Uh, looks like it does one work per tick, so yeah. I don't know how many seconds that is, 130, 129 and a half. Um, so just under two minutes. But this will enchant the hammer, and uh, I think all the, like, any of the enchants on the hammers just have additional effects. So uh, unbreaking makes it last longer, 
that doesn't particularly matter but efficiency makes it uh makes it you know more like it makes the hammers run faster um so this will just automatically take any diamond hammers that we craft out of the interface oopsies uh enchant them and then supply them to all these machines after you know when their current hammers break um i assume this runs fast enough right yeah there's no way we go through more than one hammer every two two and a half ish minutes we definitely run out of diamonds that if we did so anyways um very small improvement that just i don't know slightly improves our efficiency talking about minor improvements that slightly improve our efficiency uh i think i'm overdue to make the uh the wireless charger that i keep trying to like use the cursor to point at my upper left where it says the jetpack fuel but uh right now i've just been you know flying around and the jetpack fuel lasts a long time and basically one jetpack charge is probably enough to last like at least half an episode sometimes the entire episode but then when it gets drained i have to run over here and recharge it well that's kind of annoying right why don't we just make a wireless charger that could recharge this and any other wireless items in my or any other uh charge holding items in my inventory wirelessly not even difficult to make just need to uh make a enderman head a ender resonator and everything else is like a little bit of electric steel and a capacitor it gives us ender isle's wireless charger there's only one tier of wireless charger in ender isle in this version so we don't have to like make the seven-sided eight and ten at one uh i believe the range of this wireless charger is also quite high let's just make one and find out we go so uh it does need power suppose that's somewhat obvious let's put this right here because this is reasonably central in our base and it can provide up to i think the, its entire 200k internal buffer per tick to uh anything that receives power so it's actually an extremely fast charger um why are you not charging my jetpack you only charge items in the hot bar oh it's probably the ui bug i think it actually is charging my jetpack except that the ui just doesn't update until i unequip it no it definitely is not charging am i just out of range already is the range that small let's let's find out when do i get back in range is the range of this thing that tiny yeah i guess it is uh, it's probably somewhere around 16 to 20 blocks. So here, not charging. Ow. Okay, no, yeah, this, here, when it shows it not charging, I think that's just a UI bug. It actually is charged. It's just that while it's, like, grading, it doesn't update the number shown. But I guess the range of that wireless charger is only... How far am I from it? Like, every two of these things is uh, 16 blocks, right? So I'm somewhere around 20 blocks away. Oh, well. Um... Then maybe we should place it so well no i spend most of my time standing right here in front of my terminals and that's in range so uh yeah we have a wireless charger for our jet plate now awesome i may as well also put the various other upgrades on these um mostly just because it makes them take less durability damage when i get hit the way you apply upgrades is just in an anvil so or a vibrant crystal gets us empowered and uh, when it's empowered, it's some amount of the damage is absorbed by the uh, by the RF. So like, there's a chance when you take damage that it's basically an unbreaking effect. So, anyways, we'll do the same for our leggings. Let's see, it takes the XP too. Uh, good thing I have a endless supply of that, or at least a near endless supply of that. And the boots. And then that's like tier one empowered. There's tier two empowered with the capacitor. Uh, I'm just gonna miss. I may as well put all these upgrades on, right? Won't hurt. I'm surprised how long I managed to go without putting the night vision upgrade on the dark helm, especially because like most of my base is not lit up anymore. But uh, I forget if it's if you need the three or the eight minute dark vision potion or if either work. I know it seems to change every version of Ender IO. So let's see. Yeah, it looks like it, it'll accept the three minute one. And looks. This is an extremely convenient upgrade, and I am disappointed in myself for. Whoops, there goes that anvil. For waiting so long to make it. 
But uh, I won't bother with some of these other things like, well, I guess I'll get speed. I don't care about the apiarist stuff. I think that makes it so that bees don't damage you. As, it's as if you're wearing the apiarist suit. But uh, because I don't have, uh, you know, my chest piece doesn't match, I don't get that benefit. I won't bother with jump either because I have flight. Turns out there's three speed upgrades. They just all use a bunch of potions of swiftness. And with them, um, I honestly don't know if we move noticeably faster. Uh, it might only apply to walking speed. It definitely did the whole zoom out thing that I don't like. Maybe I'll install Optify to make that go away between episodes. But uh, I don't know. We're supposedly faster. I believe it, I guess. We're very fast. I mean, we were very fast to begin with. Although I can't help but notice that my night vision isn't on. Uh, there's probably a setting for it. E, huh? Ooh, gets a nice satisfying charge up sound too. Hey, I saw a creeper spawn over here. Ooh, that corner, I guess, is like just barely outside my, uh, the lab spawn range. All right. Well, uh, good to know. I'll fix that later. But, um, yeah, I think that's all I've got for today. Lots of running around doing small tasks, but, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode nonetheless. Um, yeah, with that, I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.